We've gone through the alphabet, all 22 letters just about. We started with Aleph. Aleph is in pictograph format, the ox head or the strength of the leader. But you come close, the next letter is bait, which is house. So we have the strength of the leader of the house. The leader of the house is rich. That's Gimel, the proud kind of rich, a good rich that is a generous rich that gives to the poor man, that opens the door to hay, which is a, in pictograph 3,000 years ago, a man jumping up and down with his hands raised means revelation. Vav is a nail, the revelation of what? There's only one revelation, ladies and gentlemen, it's the hand. It's the nail of our Messiah. Once you have the nail, the revelation of our Messiah, then it brings forth the sword of the Spirit, which is a plow, Zion, that goes into the earth, opens up the earth. And what does it do? It separates and brings forth a fence, chet. Don't say that while you're talking to your neighbor. You'll spit all over their face. And chet is a fence. It's the same fence that goes around the tabernacle. It's the tabernacle fence. It's connected to the Torah. That's why it has two pillars and a canvas in between. It's exactly what every single section of the tabernacle fence looked like. Once you have a fence, it separates light from darkness, clean from unclean, holy from, from unholy, and it gives you a choice, which is tet. Tet is the snake in the basket if you make the wrong choice. Tet is also surround. Its picture is a circle with an X in the middle. It's, it means to surround or to encompass you. It's so phenomenal that this letter is in the position that it's in because it is right before the first letter in the name of God. The first letter in the name of God is Yod. Yod is a right hand. It means right hand of power. So if you do not make the right decision and you do not choose clean versus unclean, you do not choose holy versus unholy, and you do not follow in the footsteps of your creator and come inside the fence from Chet that's leading you into the temple, you will not have the power of God in your life. You'll be stuck and surrounded by the enemy, by the snake in the basket. Most of us live here. But if you are one of the, not just the called, but the chosen, and the one who walks the narrow road, and you choose to get rid of those, those uglies out of your life, those evil spirits, and you choose to do the right thing, you get the right hand of the power of God. And when you have the power of God in the right hand, that's the seat of the Messiah, then it will make sense that the next letter, cough, is the hand of anointing comes on your head, anoints you. It's also a top view of the cherub, which is the same, uh, you, you're familiar with the cherubim, the cherubs over the altar, uh, the, the Holy of Holies, I mean, over the Ark of the Covenant. That is their letter. That is why their wings are in the form of a cough, because they are anointing, they are double anointing the mercy seat, the Ark of the Covenant, where the glory of Yahweh comes up before. He will not show his glory outside of anointing first. And inside of anointing is the prayers or the incense of his saints. This is why we have been experiencing, for those of you that are, have been in, in our prayer meetings and those of you that, that have really grasped onto this and been delivered lately, it's because you have prayer. You've, you've gone to battle in the heavenly realms through prayer. Should it surprise you that the, the glory, the face of Yahweh, does not show up between the cherubim until there is smoke, which represents the prayers of the saints, according to the scriptures. Until you pray, you cannot have the glory of God. You cannot have the power of Yahweh. It's not possible. You'll never defeat the enemy in your life. That's why I said last year, out of all the, the hours in the day, all the hours in the week, how many of those do you spend praying with your spouse or by yourself? Prayer is the only way to defeat the enemy because he's in the spiritual realm. You're not. You can't just yell at him. He doesn't care. Prayer is the only way to get it right in his face. Once you're anointed, you get a, a, a staff, which is what Laman is. It's a staff of authority. It's connected to the Torah. It means instruction. Once you have authority, then you are allowed to wash. That's what Mem is, a womb of, full of water. It, 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 it's something that burst forth like Noah's flood, the water that destroyed the earth, but also brought forth life, which is noon. Noon is a, is a little fish. It's a sperm, actually, and it means life, or it can also be translated as an agricultural term, uh, meaning a, um, a sprout that comes forth, okay? By the way, the word prophet is connected to the agricultural term sprouting from the earth as well. What do prophets do? They break open dry ground and bring forth new life, if you let them. Samic is, the, is a staff uh, that, that you are leaning on. It's, it's a, a leaning on a staff. So when you have life, 
you will speak forth, when you have life, you are truly leaning on that life. Depending on what you lean on depends on whether or not you have you go to the next letter, which is spiritual insight. If you're leaning on the truths of God's word and no tradition and doctrine of men, you will have spiritual insight. If you're leaning on yourself or your power or your gifts or your talent or your money or your job or your anything, you will be guided by your eyes. And the Bible says we're not, we don't live by eyesight. We live by what? Faith. It's a spiritual eye. Some of you have spiritual cataracts. And some of those have been released in the last couple of weeks. Once you have spiritual insight, then once you see, what's the first thing that happens when you see your favorite team score a touchdown or your favorite person hit a home run in the World Series? You see it, and then what do you do? You proclaim. When the father this last week showed me in my spiritual iron, when he showed me in my spiritual life, the sin that was in my life, the lack of faith, I proclaimed it immediately. That's what sets you free. Once you proclaim it, you become righteous. That's what sadi means. It's righteous. Sadiq. Kuf. Once you are righteous, you have the ability to see in both kingdoms. It's a setting sun. It it's kind of means to be, be behind or a setting sun where you can, you, you, half the sun is up and half the sun is down. You have the ability to walk inside both dimensions, both the spiritual and the physical realm. That is the definition of a righteous man. A righteous man is one who keeps the divine laws, the diakonos in, in, in Greek. Uh, the, when you keep the divine laws through the faith and through all the journey of the other previous letters, you have the ability to see in both realms. That's when you're useful to the maker, to speak into someone's life. Then we came to resh. Resh is the beginning. It's the head of. It means the head of or the beginning. You might find it strange that beginning is near the end until you realize that the end is told from the beginning. And then we come to tonight's letter. Sheen. One of my favorite letters, if it's possible to have a favorite letter, is the letter Sheen. So to sum it all up, it's this. The letter Sheen is the tooth or the teeth of God. It means to consume it's fire. It's the all-consuming fire that you are to let into your life. Let it burn everything out of you. It hurts, but it will feel good when it's over. It's like a doctor giving you the right prescription. It hurts, and then it feels good. You can actually take this symbol, and it can be sideways like an X, or it can be a cross. Treasure is found at the end where X marks the spot. So it's not coincidence that Ta, the X, the cross, is at the end of the Hebrew alphabet because the entire spiritual journey must lead to the cross. It must lead to the X marks the spot. It must lead to the mark. Let's continue. This is its literal meaning when you write out the Hebrew word tav, it is simply tav and vav. The two Hebrew letters there on your right is the letter tav, and on your left is the vav. Tav means covenant. Vav means a nail or to connect. So how amazing is the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet? What it means in ancient Paleo-Hebrew is this, the covenant of the nail. Strong's number 8420 is tav. It is an actual Hebrew word. We don't have to make up what it means because it is a word. If you look up Strong's 8420, you will discover that it means mark. It means mark. Sign, our covenant, and it can also mean, more importantly, seal. 